good day. So um I'm Rinda Widokan from Mastery, Department of Mathematics KNST. So to help you with your probability and statistics, we decided to go through the remaining topics with you. And to make sure you really understand it, we'll be using Madame Wilhelmina Domapel's PDF, who happens to be a PhD candidate in the Department of Statistics and Arterial Science. Madame, please permit me to use your material. <coughs> so on today's lesson, we'll be going through some counting techniques as we go through the multiplication rule, then combination and permutations. So let's begin. So tools for counting sample points. So with our multiplication theorem, so it says that if an operation can be performed in n one ways, and after it is performed in any of those ways, we can have a second operation in n two ways, a third in n three, up to a k operation. Then the number of ways of doing this thing is the product of our um, ends. So let me illustrate it here for you. For instance, if let's say you have something which can perform in three ways, and the first can perform in n1 way, the second in n2 ways, and the third in n3 ways. Then when you put all of them together, that's the composite of them, will be given by n1 times n2 times n3. So this is what the multiplication rule states. So here, for instance, it says, an experiment consists of rolling two dice, envision stage one as ruling the first and stage two as ruling the second. So, what outcome do you expect? So let's see something. So we know that our stage one is for ruling the first fair die. And we know that when you have a fair die, the sample space you have one, two, three, four, five, six. So that means the possible ways here are six. And for the N2 also stands for ruling the second die. So here too we have um six ways here. So that means that when you put these two together, it's going to be n1 times n2, which will be 6 times 6, which will be called the 36 ways. So this is what our multiplication rule states. So you realize that we have 36 different outcomes. So let's illustrate it with one more example. So for instance, your n1 way is for you to roll a die, and your n2 way is a pen. So you realize that with a die, our n1 will be 6, like our outcomes will be 6, and for a crane, our outcome will be what? 12. So that means that when we add these two events together, we are going to have 12 different ways. So this is what the multiplication rule states, or uh, is all about. So the next thing is, um, we'll be starting with permutation, and we'll next move on to combination. So... Permutation is very very important when you want to arrange objects and there is a slight difference between permutation and combination. You now permutation and combination both deal with arrangement but with permutation we are very much interested in the other. Yes, the other is very very important but in combination we do not, we are not interested in the other. Like, the order is not important for us, but in permutation, we are interested in the order. So just note this. It's very, very important. So it says, frequently, one is interested in a sample space that contains as many elements or possible arrangements of a group of objects. Example, one may want to know in how many possible ways five people can sit around a table, or one may ask how many different ways are possible for drawing two lottery tickets from a total of ten. The different arrangements is what we term as permutation. Okay, All right. So let me illustrate something here. So when you have, let's say, something which has n outcomes, and you want to know the number of arrangements of that thing, it is just given as n factorial. So that would just be the answer, n factorial. So here, for instance, it says, in how many ways can three different books, I, G, K, be arranged on a shelf? So realize that our n here is what 3, so that means the number of ways to be what 3 factorial, which would be 3 times 2 times 1, which would be 6. So you know when you have n factorial, is given us, um, so here we have 3 factorial, so we had 
3 times 2 times 1. So n factor is given as m n times n minus 1 times up to um, get our 1 factor here. Okay. Alright, so that means you're going to have 6 different ways and you know we can we can see it here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Alright, so in general, n distinct objects can be arranged in n factorial, as I just said, and these are factorial expansion. Then we now let's go on to this question. It says, my bookshelf has 10 books on it. How many ways can I remove the 10 books on the shelf? As I said, this is just what 10 factorial, which will give you this particular answer here. So now we are interested in when we have permutations of n different things, taking r at a time. So... The number of permutation of n different objects taking r at a time is denoted as n permutation r. The number of ways to do this is given as so n permutation r. When you expand it, this is what you get. So it's given as n factorial, then n minus r factorial. And our r should be always less than n because the permutation of negative numbers do not exist. So always this has to be less than this so that the difference here will be positive. I hope you get it. Yeah. Alright, so this question says that with a group of five people, I want to choose a committee with three members. So know this is our n. Our n is five. Our r is three. So a president, a vice president, and a secretary. How many ways can I do this? So this is just n, which is five, permutation what r, which is three. So five permutation three, which is <clears throat> five factorial over five minus three factorial. Which will give 120 over 2, which will give you 60, not 6, 60. Alright. So, sometimes, you know, we will have certain things repeating. We will not have distinct objects. So, what happens if the objects to permute are not distinct? So, we are going to illustrate it with this example. So, for instance, we consider this word, Pepe. Realize that with Pepe, we have P repeating three times here and E repeating twice. So that means that they are not distinct. Some are repeating. So how many permutations of the letters are possible? So when you have something like this, what you do is that we first count the number of letters we have here. You see one, two, three, four, five, six. So that means six factorial. Then we count the repeating one. So you see P is repeating three times. So over three factorial that we see here. Then the E is also repeating twice. So over the two factorial that we see here, then the R is repeating one, so times one. And when you do this, you get 60. So let me illustrate with another example. So let's take the um word Accra. We are all familiar with Accra. <laughs> so you realize that with Accra, our E here is not the same because it's repeating twice. Our C here is also not the same because it's repeating twice. So how many ways can we permute these letters? You realize that we have five different letters here. Then over how many ways or uh, it's A repeating. So A is repeating twice. C is also repeating twice. Then R is just once. So we have something like this, which will give us um, 120 over 4. Which gives us 30, right? So 30 different ways. So that's what we're talking about. So simple. Then <clears throat> you know we go to multinomial coefficients. So suppose that in a set of n objects there are n one ways that are similar, n two that are similar, and n k that are similar, where n one plus n two plus n k equals n. Then the number of permutations, distinguishable permutations of the n object is given as this particular thing that we have here. So you realize that let's illustrate that with this particular question here. This is how many signals each consisting of nine flags in a line can be made from four white flags, two blue flags, and three yellow flags. So realize that when you add this three here, this two here, and this four here, it gives you what? Nine. Remember we said n1 plus n2 up to the nk should give us our n. So this is our n, n1, n2, n3. When you add it, it gives you your n. So that means we just be 9 factorial. So 9 factorial here, then times 4 factorial times 2 factorial times 3 factorial, which should give you 
this thousand two hundred and sixty. So let's move on to when we have circular permutation. So permutation that occur by arranging objects in a circle are called circular permutations. It can be shown that the number of permutations of n distinct objects arranged in a circle is n minus one factorial. So for instance, if you have five objects and you want to arrange them in a circle, because you're arranging this in a circle, it's going to be five minus one factorial, which will give you four factorial, which will be what twenty-four. So that means that you have twenty-four different ways of having it arranged. So now let's move on to the last subtopic. So combination. So we said combination is when we arrange things without taking into consideration the order. So without regard to order. So for combination, we don't take into consideration the order. So um when you have an combination R, it's giving us n factorial over r factorial, then n minus r factorial. So let's take note of this thing here, it's very important. So it says that a combination is actually a partition with two cells. One cell containing the R objects, so these are the R objects, another containing the N minus 1. This is the N minus 1 object. So we realize that N combination R also denoted as this is given by this particular relation that we have here. So let's take this particular example. It says from four mathematicians and a three chemist. Find the number of committees that can be formed consisting two mathematicians and one chemist. Um, I'm proud to be a mathematician. <laughs> and I hope you are proud too. So, you know, the number of ways we have four mathematicians here, we are supposed to select just two. So, the number of ways we can select two mathematicians from four mathematicians, you see, we are not taking into consideration any other. We just want to select just any two of them from the four. So, that means we are using what? Combination. So, it will be for combination 2, which we have here, which will give us 6. Then we also want to select just one chemist from the total of 3 without any taking into consideration any other anything. So that means to be 3 combination 1. So the number of ways of selecting our chemist to be, which will be 3. So when you find the composites of them, when you put them together, then we use our multiplication rule. So it's going to be 6 times 3, which gives us 18 different ways. So that's it with um, today's lesson. In our next lesson, we'll talk about conditional probability. Start with that one. Um, but I have some questions here for you to try your hands on to show whether you understand what we did or not. So this is a trial work. It says, an artist has nine paintings. How many ways can he hang four paintings side by side? So see, side by side. That means you are talking about order. So you should know what to use on a gallery wall. So the answer is supposed to be 3024. And the second question says 12 patients are available for use in a research study. Only seven should be assigned to receive the study treatment. How many different subsets of seven patients can be selected? You're supposed to get 792. You should know we are not interested in order here. You should know what to use. So thank you very much for watching. And in our next lesson, we'll begin from where we ended in the notes.